fun in a bag. Nevertheless. Brett wrote American Psycho. Uh, excuse me, I think you'll find Canadian alt rockers treble charger wrote uh, American Psycho. So what's the problem with the human race? Or someone like you, no matter where you turn, it can't escape the double face. Don't wanna listen to the radio, cause they don't know. I sit around just to hear I told you. It couldn't make it without. It should've known better to doubt you. Yeah, well, it's, it's in here somewhere. I thought I'd had the end of it. Two, three, four, and now I know how far you'd go to be the next freak show. American Psycho cover around the magazine. Interview on Charlie Sheen, which I never <laughs> Sorry. I remember, I got that CD. <clears throat> the CD was called Brand New Low. I got that CD for Christmas one year. And I listened to Treble Chargers, uh, American Psycho, probably like 15 times in a row right after I got it. And then my dad came in from his uh, bedroom and was like, I, I was like, Dad, you got to hear this song. And he said, don't worry, I've heard it. And I was like, I still remember the, I've, I've never been owned like that in my life prior to that moment. Kind of a goaded album, though, when you're in eighth grade anyway. <laughs> I suppose. I mean, when in Rome, <laughs> uh, why not? Puppy again? Would you rather I run Peacock Leech? Maybe we'll run both, honestly. Maybe you'll get your dream come true. That's a strong team. This is post country, Ryan. Yeah, I listen to exclusively country music from like. Um, I, you know, like, age zero until uh, I was ten. Come on. Sure. Then, I listened to The Offspring. And then, like, that, like fifth to eighth grade was basically just like, hey, what's that new Offspring song? Then I actually, I remember, so like I was at my grandparents' house, they had MTV, which we did not have in my household because they had gray market satellite. That's a secret I told you in good uh, faith chat, by the way. Don't, uh, actually, well, they're kind of like a little dead now. So um, what are they going to do? Put them in jail? I don't think so. Anyway, they had MTV. I saw, I was watching MTV, saw Modest Mouth's float on music video. I said, I got to buy this CD. Go to Sunrise Records in uh, the Cataraqui Town Center by Good News for People Who Loves Bad News. It's got the lime green cover with the arrows sticking into it. Listened to it at home, ripped it to Windows Media Player so I could listen to it digitally. I thought to myself, this is the greatest album I've ever heard. Let's look up reviews to confirm my bias that this is the greatest album ever made. Found a, like a 7.4 out of 10 review on Good News for People Who Love Bad News on Pitchfork Media. Said these guys are snobs who don't want the, know what the hell they're talking about read the website every single day for the next decade, and that's how the snob that you know before you has appeared. That's, that's, that's my origin story of, of how I got into the Cocteau Twins, okay? Okay, it's round five. Interesting. How about a little three-squad Andy? I'm not taking the lobster, okay? Don't mistake my mercy for its uh, idiocy. We take? Or do we take? I gotta think about this one. What the hell, man? Take this for now, then. Pitchfork lost all credibility for me when they gave Daft Punk's Discovery a 6.4. The pro Okay, so Pitchfork in the early days, they were too much of like, we gotta kill the sacred cows, okay? They were way too into like, hey, that album you like, actually it like fucking sucks. 
Then, like, there came a period where they kind of, like, sort of figured it out, and I felt like most of the takes were actually somewhat reasonable, and they stopped being snobbed. And then, like, I don't know. I just, I think eventually I just ran out of time, and I stopped reading any music media online, and then I stopped listening to new music, and I just get in my car and say, hey, Spotify, play Peg by Steely Dan, and then hit shuffle. That's, that's pretty much just how it... Uh, happens for me now but i will also say they lost a lot of credibility for me when they, so they gave big boy's solo album uh sir luscious left foot they gave it like a 9.3 i bought that shit and listened to it i was like this is an amazing album then like last year they had an article that was like the, the 20 times we got it wrong and they re-reviewed all the shit that they most of it was like hey when we gave daft punk's discovery a, a 6.4 that was stupid it's actually like a nine and a half they were like all like we missed we should have rated this higher we should have rated this higher we should have rated this higher then they went to big boys or luscious left foot and i was like they're gonna revise this shit up to a 10 because shine blockers is like one of the greatest summer jams of all time they took it down to like a 7.8 for, for what? Big Boy was just sitting there catching strays for nothing. Oh, because uh, something like Follow Us sounds like a little too like weirdly new metal in the modern climate? Get over yourself. It makes me sick. You know what? Maybe we could use a shooter. What do you think about a shooter? Shooter! One garlic, one lemon. Sounds sensible to me. Andre 3000 wrote that review. Big boy's trapped in his cadmium palace. Confirmed. I blew my damn speakers out with Shutterbug. I could see how you could do that. I was mostly on the air, well, not even AirPods. It was probably like $10. The, the cheapest earbuds for sale at uh, Radio Shack, which still existed at the time when I owned that album. Um, I'm going to level with you, brother. We, we got to level you. It's for next time. I didn't even know he had a solo album. Bro, he's got, he's got bunches of them. He has several. This is really bad. What age did you discover Steely Dan? I don't know, like 31? <laughs> it, was, it was recent, that's for sure. Level me, level me, caterpillar me. Honestly, you're gonna go fucking hard. There's no doubt about that. Your ass is gone. Your ass is showing up. Roll me once. Mm, you know, you could do worse. You could do worse than that. You have one unit? Um, yeah, but what a unit. Could be worse. I could be like my opponent right now and have no units by, by your reasoning. I know what I must do. Sell me. Buy me. Buy me. Sell me. Buy me. I love this. I love this for me. What age did you discover Joanna Newsom? I don't know, like 17? It was weird when I went through that, that Joanna Newsom phase like a, a year ago. Because it actually, for me, it... it Illuminated. Oh, I'm dead. You got me. That's that's four. I my vocabulary has gotten better since university. Like when I first listened to Joanna Newsom, I was like, I understand like an eighth of these words. When I listened to Joanna Newsom as a 32 year old, I was like, holy, holy shit. I know some of these words. I know what antediluvian means now. It's actually, I, I know I've said this before, we'll be a hungry turtle. It's fucked up the thing that Joanna Newsom wrote Ease when she was like 19 years old or something. How did, did she like literally study the dictionary as a child? Like it just doesn't m make sense to me.
I'm I'm jealous, if anything. It's mostly just jealousy. Was her homepage thesaurus.com? Good own. I love that. Yes, she did. It's because she wasn't allowed to watch TV. Dude, honestly, kind of based. We let our daughter watch TV like all the time. We just restrict the shows. Like, I'm not going to let her watch TLC till she's like at least 35. You should not be exposed to that trash until... I, I Honestly, I think until you have a kid of your own, quite frankly. History Channel, I would say, is about the same, 35. Kardashians, I honestly think at around like 13... That would be a good time to introduce her to the Kardashians. Because I really want to instill like some good values in her. Like, Because this is a family that's been through a lot. They stuck together. They kept their heads screwed on straight. They got good values. That's the kind of thing that I would like to see her emulate personally. Although I will say, <laughs> though obviously that was all a joke. However, did you see the ep well, not the episode, but the clip that's gone a little viral of... Um, the Kardashians episode where one of the Kardashians has to cut a cucumber and she's holding the knife like overhand like I, d I don't even know how to describe the the way that she is holding the knife but it is the way that you would hold a knife if you've never cut a vegetable in your entire life ice pick grip no it's kind of it's hard to explain it's like by the way, I'm taking a peacock. I'm mad that we didn't win that one. It was like, you know, like when you cut, you would like hold the, th the vegetable and then you'd hold the knife and you go. Tuk, 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 tuk. She was like reversed. Like she was holding like it like this and then cutting like over her wrist or something. And her, her wrists were like all bent weird. It was just it was not right, man. It just something was not right. You know what? I think this team's ass anyway. Just get a little head start. That was Kendall Jenner. That's a Kardashian, right? Thank you, Iguana. I appreciate that a lot. Yes, that is, that is a Kardashian. Thank you. Kinda? What do you mean, kinda? <laughs> Has Guy Smiley said any crazy shit lately? I don't know, like... <sighs> Pog? How about one of these? Um, honestly, I, wait, we're going to win so easily. Your ass is gone. I know how that looks, but this is the way to do it. We'll level... Oh, wait, hold on. There's an emperor here. We got to take that next time. Okay. Sesame Street's been pretty good lately. Um... But I, I haven't seen Guy Smiley in a while, but I think there's one guy who does the voice for Guy Smiley and other uh, units on Sesame Street. And they are units, don't get it twisted. Um, so he comes on during the episode where they make music at Nina's bike shop. And they go, you know, All you need is right at hand, make an instrument, join the band, join the band. And then... Uh, fake guy smiley shows up and goes is that you guys playing music and then Tully is fucking zooted he's smashing on the bike fenders with a drumstick he goes yes we're making real music and then nina goes we can stop if you want and then the guy goes no don't stop you're putting down a solid beat that makes me want to move my feet and he goes like he goes crazy anyway so that's recent Sesame Street um, discourse, I suppose. I should have kept you around to begin with the first time. You should have killed me when you had the chance, by the way. Forget that. Not necessary. I love Sesame Street, man. It's... 
It's actually just a great show. I know that clip. The woman has never cut a vegetable in her life. I honestly, when you said that clip, I thought you were talking about damn Sesame Street. And I got mighty confused about... I was like, what the hell? I need a lollipop. It, it had to be you. Anyway, we don't need to talk about Sesame Street that much, but it's a good show. I, oh, my dear. Oh, okay. I'm gonna freaking die, dude. I'm dead. That did not go well. What is that? Two wins? <laughs> Quick 50x. <clears throat> Did you know there's a new Kermit voice actor who doesn't sound that good? Did you know um, that if you're the target age for the Muppets, you shouldn't know what Kermit used to sound like because you were born in the 2020s? We draw these. So your baby? Yes. Precisely. That is correct. Are you really going to make me take a pill bug? Okay. So be it then. <laughs> Holy smokes, I was two. Oh, you're not two years old. You were... I Because you can't be on Twitch at that age. I was going to say, get out of here. Everybody put some pogs in chat so the admins can't find them. How does it feel to know your baby was born in the 20s? Yeah, it's not weird. Um, it's way weirder to me that there are people watching this born in the 2000s than the idea that my child was born in the 2020s, for sure. By the way, I'm definitely taking a peacock again. Just give it a little juice first and maybe even a little squeeze. Do not get it twisted. This is going to work. This is not going to work. This crew is bad. Is it? It's good enough to draw with. 2000 gang. That's so funny. I must seem so old to you. But I was born in 1988. What's... And I'm being real with you. This shit is crazy. You don't realize it because if you were born in 2000... You're probably at the age where you're like, I'm not even young anymore. But I'm here to tell you, you stay young like fucking forever. It never ends. When I go outside, I'm not the youngest. But like most people I see are older than me by like 15 years. Like the median individual is like old. So you basically just like if you thought, oh, when I'm 30, I'm not going to be young anymore. No, you're still going to be young. You're going to you're probably going to be young until you're like 45 years old would be my guess. And then at 40 like 45 to like 70 you're just like normal. And then 71 you're old as dirt. That's what cuz I get it cuz when you're really young, you're in school surrounded by people who are like exactly the same age as you. You're like, "Oh, uh Michael is old. He was born in January. I was born in October. He's old as shit." In the real world, that's not what it's like. It's like you go to college, you start to have like weird, you know, 27-year-olds in your undergrad classes. You start to get introduced. There's like 55-year-old uh, women starting a new career who like refuse to not ask seven questions every time the lecture ends, et cetera, et cetera. You start to in get introduced to the gen pop. And then like as when you get out into the real, real world, you're interacting with such a wide swath of the populace, you realize... You're really, you're, you're actually young until you're like 40. At least, I would say. I mean, it, maybe it depends on the demographics, like where you live. But at least in Canada, you're like, you're young at 40. I'm not saying that for copium. I would rather have people be like, this guy's old. And then maybe I wouldn't be bothered so much in public. <laughs> Yeah, 
Maybe, maybe the, the whippersnappers would leave me alone. Stop trying to get me to catch their shiny Kyogres. That's how I know I'm not old. You really think if I was old, a 12-year-old boy would ask me to catch a Pokemon for him? He would be like, you probably don't even know how to use this phone. Okay, hold on. I'm focusing. Full freaking focus. We don't need to save gold. Just take some stats. All you need is right at hand. Make an instrument. Join the band. I was also... So one of my friends just turned uh, 33, which is my age. Um, I promise. Uh, I was talking to him, and he was like, you know, I don't mind getting older, but, like, my wife doesn't like getting older. She's officially in her mid-30s now. I said, I know it's a cliche, but actually since exercising, like, regularly, I, on a day-to-day -day basis, I feel better every day than I did when I was, like, 21. But... The addendum to that is that when I was 21, I probably spent about 20% of any given week hungover. So, like, it's not really like an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. It's like the last time I can really... I always, I always have to compare, like, how I feel now with how I felt when I was, like, 17 and I graduated from high school. The last time my... My body was pure and unfettered by, you know, the number of Lakeport honeys that I drank in undergrad. I felt pretty good at 17, but I feel pretty good now, too. And honestly, I don't know how people feel about this. If there's still like this idea that, uh, give me this for now. Honestly, your ass is gone. No, what are you, why are you keeping this idiot? Go on, well, because I can't afford him, run it. Fucking... Okay, whatever. I don't know if people still do the thing that we did when I was younger, which is that you're like, oh, you know, being, I can't wait till I'm older, you know, it's because there's, or, I don't know, or maybe people do the opposite now, where they're like, oh, being old sounds like it kind of sucks, I want to stay young forever. I'm here to tell you, like, being young is like kind of ass. At least like when I think back to what I was uh, as, a, as a human at like 17, I was like, I got in my own way a lot, you know? Like, if you asked me to do, like, a, a physics equation, no problem. If, if my mom sent me to the mall and was, like, buy me a moisturizer at the body shop, I would be there for, like, six hours. I didn't know how to fucking do anything real. I knew how to write stuff on lined paper and hand it in. But I didn't know how to, like, complete an actual task, like, like make a can of soup or something like that. I much prefer it now. Can I get a leech, please, by the way? I'd just like to no life this one. I'd like to get a leech, please. I'd like a leech. I'd like a no life leech, please. What is this team? What, are, what am I doing? So, like, I think if you take good care of yourself to the best of your ability, then, like, when you get older, you're kind of in the sweet spot in a way because you feel about the same as you did when you were younger, but with the confidence and competence that comes with having been an adult for a stretch of time. At least that's the way I, I would like to think about it. We could try this. We can't try this. I don't have any money. <laughs> we could try it now. I'm not paying attention at all. How did I not get sniped? Holy cow. We win these. I don't believe it. You got to check out the I am the asshole post that's trending right now. Okay. I'm going to reddit.com slash r slash am I the asshole. It's trending. So I'm going to assume it's, it, I'm going to know it when I see it, huh? Is it? Am I the asshole for keeping a score of my husband's incompetence? Is that the one? Yes, that's the one. Okay. I and my husband have been married. Wait, we've been together for six years. We have three small kids under five. Yes, I had three babies in four years. Yes, I am tired. 
in general, my husband's a great guy, but he started doing something that really upsets me. Here's the most recent example. All right, so he's a 26-year-old man with three kids. Let's make his life a little harder. What'd you do to throw a monkey wrench into this situation? On my husband's day off, he wanted to stay home and rest, so I went grocery shopping. Came home, put all the groceries away, cleaned the house. He did clean our room. Prepared everything for our son's birthday party the next day and made dinner. Once dinner was over, I started tidying up and he got down on the floor to stretch out a pain in his back. I tossed him a paper towel and said, why don't you wipe up that spill while you're down there? Passively and lighthearted. Ooh, I would have to be on the floor to clean it myself, so it made sense to me to ask him while he was already on the floor. So it was fun and lighthearted, but also I did want him to clean that up for me while I was down there. He said no, got up and walked away. I was so frustrated at this as this has happened a few times over the last week. You can't just say no and walk away like that. It's very rude and disrespectful to me. I asked for your help with something. He said, did you seriously just tell me I can't say no? I'm a grown man. I don't need to explain things to you. You can tell me no. I can tell you no. I told him I would never actually just tell him no because he would get upset. I also added that it's not that he can't say no. I just wish he would talk things out to me as a team, such as no, I don't have time right now or no, but I can get to it later. We went back and forth a few times and just ended up agreeing to listen to each other more. It really bothered me that he said I could tell him no any time, as this has never been true in our relationship. All day Saturday, I tried telling him about little things. Will you make that appointment for me? No. Will you go get me a trash bag? No. Will you grab me some lunch? No. I didn't put my foot down on any of it. I just started with a no and would go to walk away, and he would either reason with me, convince me, or get frustrated with me, and each time I would end up doing it like I always have. The next morning he asked me to do something. I put my foot down and said I didn't want to do it. He got really upset and asked why I was being so difficult. So I told him this. Yesterday I told you no 11 times. 11 times you got frustrated with me or did not accept the no. Not even one time did you accept my no. How can you do You have How do you have time to hate each other this much with three kids? It, it just doesn't make sense to me. And, the, the, and I don't even want to get started about how long it took you to wrote, write the damn post in the first place, but... Anyway, he said the fact I kept track and said no to prove a point was toxic. If he did that to me, I would be really mad. I told him the fact that I needed to keep track to prove a point was toxic when he should want to fix the situation. He still stands by me being toxic. So am I the asshole? What the hell? Well, look, I'm going to be honest. That's like a 6 out of 10 post. I don't know if that was the one you were looking for. I'm not being a hater. I, it, it was a, I, I, I expected it to bring the heat a little bit more, though. I expected it to be a little bit more, like, insane. This just seems like two people that are not getting along very well. I think her throwing the paper towel is a good joke. You know... It's just, my whole squad is dead. Um, never mind, I'm gonna win. Uh, it's just one of those things. You can't ask for somebody to do a favor by, like, tossing them a paper towel and saying, could you get that? Because it, there's an implication there. The implication is that, like, you're not helping me out at all. By the way, I do... You're, okay, you're, I'm farming minus twos now, and I'm, I've turned it into actual React Court. And that's not what I meant to do, but here we are. Maybe yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a lot of negative, uh, negativity for this. And some people may disagree with me. And that's fine. You can disagree with me. But here's what I'm going to say. If you're 26, you're married, and you're, you have three kids, and it's your day off, and your philosophy is I'm not going to do anything on my day off because it's my day off, you kind of got to fucking like, nut up a little bit because there's no such thing as a day off, really, when you got... A fucking huge family. You're 26 years old. You could, you know, you could take a maybe like a little time off. Be like, hey, I'm kind of burnt out on like the parenting stuff. Maybe like all tidy up while you handle the kids for a bit. Or you could be like, I'm burnt out on the chores stuff. Maybe I'll take the kids to the park while you clean up. But you definitely can't be like, I'm just gonna sit on the couch and like vibe while you do everything. It's, you're setting yourself up for despair. I'm getting so many plus twos. This is scary. Also, this is like the crow percent build. In case you're curious. Whatever, dude. Honestly, I'm buying. 
You spitting out a scorpion is kind of is kind of amazing. Spits a level one copy of a friendly random pet. Okay, okay. Leech me? <laughs> I guess we could have leeched, huh? Yeah, well, nevertheless. I don't know what this team is here. I just keep going. I, I just keep buying six cent chocolate. Nice puppy. <laughs> oh, man. And then I said, I swear to you, I said, nice puppy. Oh, dude. Anyway, I don't think that was the post you're looking for. I think I was guilty of getting baited. I don't want you. Imagine. That was not the right post. Yeah, I know how it sounds. No, actually, I think because... I think people agree with me. It's just a matter of phrasing, okay? And the matter of phrasing is... It's not that you can choose not to do anything on your day off. It's just if you want to have days off where you get to not do anything, then you should not have kids or you should like live with your parents forever, basically. So that they can watch the kids some days. The post they wanted you to read was a catering post, but it got deleted. Okay, hold on, hold on. Catering. Catering? I haven't I haven't refreshed the tab yet. It's all caps. Am I the asshole for telling my family they're not in my grandparents' trust? Am I the asshole for making fun of my partner's hair loss? Title sounds bad, I know. This has been an ongoing argument between my partner and I for almost six months now. What the hell? This is crazy. Anyway, sorry. Stop baiting me into React Court, okay? I'm no lifing uh, 10 win runs on the easiest weekly of all time. You wouldn't understand. It's trending on Twitter. This is what happens when you disable links. I, I, I can't blame you. I gotta blame myself, man. Also, I'm dead. Okay, let me finish this one first. Then we can then we can discuss it. Okay. I got so many lives to lose. What do, what do I even do with you? It doesn't even make any damn sense. Now I got. Why do I need these scorpions? I don't need scorpions. You turn everything into a scorpion. Okay, sell me, and then buy something. That has like HP. You know what? What about a tamarind? No. Unless. What about a quick little. What about a quick little dragon? Okay. Please take tamarind. Listen, listen. I, I draw these. I draw these. Still drawing. I draw these, okay. Nice puppy. Now you gotta go too. You don't have to be here anymore. We need, you know what? We need something that spawns something. It makes perfect sense. This shit makes no sense at all. What am I? What am I doing? What am I? Maybe you can you spawn two things. Dragon? What about your dragon? What about my dragon? There was an orca there. Well, yeah. Shut up, okay? This is gonna work. Get killed. Spawn something that kills. Get killed. 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 Quick little death touch for you. Mm, quick little death touch for you. We draw these, okay? <laughs> You're absolutely right. We should be getting rid of tier ones. We should be buying tier ones, I should say. Summon a level level two copy. I don't need a level two copy. I need two level one copies. What are you doing? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I got lost in the sauce. I was doing React Court. I don't even know where we are right now.
Oh my god, we got... It didn't work? Our truculence? No, no, no. How dare you? On it, we deserve to lose this. We, we're gonna lose it and we deserve to lose this. Wait, but it's not over yet. We have a thousand life. I can't believe this. Okay, your ass is gone. Your ass is part of the squad. Your ass is gone. Your ass is part of the squad. Your ass is gone. Your ass is part of the squad. Your ass is gone. Welcome to the party, pal. Yeah, it's a meme. So, so sue me. Please, please. My ass is dead, dude. Okay. So sell me. Buy me. Sell me. I can't believe it. I'm, I'd like to apologize to the, the people who bet on 10 here. This should have been automatic. And yet here we are. I got distracted talking about how there's no such thing as a day off in Bill Belichick's domestic life. We break it. We buy it. You like it? Just bought it? Yeah, we're dead. <laughs> the 10 bettors deserved more. Okay, true, true, true. Probably, probably true. We bet on, we, you know what? Nine believers, they're believers in their own right. Twitter. And then I search Twitter, catering. Catering wedding Disney. Am I the asshole for not having catering at my wedding? Me and my fiance just got married two months ago. We had a dream wedding. Everything was perfect, and I mean everything. But my parents and his parents helped us pay for a great chunk of the wedding, so we would be debt-free, and we are so eternally grateful for that. Chad, so steal yourselves. This does it. That doesn't make them bad people. It makes their parents generous. The issue arose about a month and a half ago when my aunt started posting on Facebook about how disappointed she was with the whole ordeal and a few guests sided with her. Background, my fiancé and I are both huge Disney fans. We travel to Disney World as much as we can. Disney is such an important part not only to us, but also our marriage. The issue was with... Fair enough, okay? Fair enough. That's their personal choice. Let's see how it fucked over their whole wedding. The issue was with our decision to not offer catering or bar services at our wedding due to routing the money towards having a wedding Minnie and Mickey make appearances at our special day. The cost to have both Minnie and Mickey for a good chunk of time, 30 minutes, was almost exactly what our parents allotted for the catering budget, so we scheduled an appearance during our first dance and our wedding photos for going served food, though, we're pl though there were plenty of facilities at the venue where people could eat. Is the venue Disney World? This is something you can't do. Or at least you have to warn people like that you can't. Because when you go to a wedding, there's like a trade. You see their special day and then you buy them like an air fryer and then you get a meal and maybe a couple drinks from them on the house. That's the trade-off. You can't not feed them because then it's just wait. Basically, it like maybe there were a hundred people there. Instead of being able to eat a meal, they got to see Mickey and Minnie Mouse in costume for thirty minutes. That's just crazy. My parents were very supportive of it, but everyone else is being passive aggressive about it on Facebook. Am I the asshole? To those asking if guests were warned, we clearly outlined in the invitation that there was food available at the venue. See, I, me, an idiot, if I read that, I would say, oh, they're going to feed us. Like every wedding of all time. But I guess I didn't read the fine print. We didn't exactly spell out every restaurant's menu, but it was certainly mentioned. There were also vending machines available throughout. For everyone saying it's too much for 30 minutes, I want to clarify it was two 30-minute sessions on different days. $27.50 was the cost for one session. 
Oh my, this can't be real. I can't let myself get baited by this. Let me slash marker SAP. Let's, let's finish.